Hello everyone, this is Greg from BrothersInsanity.com, bringing you another episode of GNP, or Games You've Never Played. This week's video, we're going to talk about a game called Snatcher. And Snatcher was originally released in 1988 in Japan for the PC-88 and the MSX2 computer system. This was the second game that Hideo Kojima wrote and directed, his first of course being Metal Gear. Now the version I'm playing today is the Sega CD version, which released in 1994 and according to the localization team, only sold a few thousand copies. This is clearly reflected in the rarity and the price, as the copy on eBay goes for about $200. Snatcher is a cyberpunk-themed text adventure game that is heavily influenced by Western films such as Blade Runner and The Terminator. Hideo Kojima has always been heavily influenced by movies. In fact, the idea for Metal Gear came from the movie Great Escape, and of course, most people know that Solid Snake was heavily based on Snake Plissken from the Escape from New York and Escape from LA movies. The story has you playing as Gillian Seed, who has recently become a Junker, which is a secret task force set up just to stop these bioroids known as Snatchers. And they're called Snatchers because they basically replicate and replace living human beings and there's no way to tell them apart. Obviously you can see some parallels with the movie Blade Runner. Your character, along with quite a few other characters in the game, actually suffer from amnesia. And so obviously, if you've seen the movie Blade Runner before, you can kind of see parallels in the story as well. And again, I'm going to keep this spoiler free, as I always try to do. But he definitely took a lot of inspiration from that story. Unfortunately, in the original game, the story got cut short because of time restraints. And Kojima actually had to end this after Act 2. And originally, they had had a whole third act planned. Later, they came back to that storyline with a game, a prequel game called SD Snatcher, and it was actually a turn-based RPG and very unique. Unfortunately, never saw a stateside release. Now, back to the gameplay. I would call this game a graphical text adventure, mostly because you're not allowed to move around the screen or point and click, and you have to input via text, but in this version of the game, they actually just gave you all the options as selectable with the D-pad and the controller. So you have options such as ask, investigate, look, different things like that, and then it gives you a list of what you can interact with. The version I'm playing, the Sega CD version here, this even threw in an extra light gun compatible minigame. Although I don't use the light gun for this, uh, it's basically a 3x3 grid. So each direction on the D-pad is what direction you have to hold to shoot in that direction. It's about 10,000 times easier than actually pointing the gun at the right spot on the screen. One thing I noticed right away and that I really enjoy in this and in a lot of older games is it doesn't hold your hand. And I don't mean in the sense that it's really overly difficult, just that it doesn't tell you what you have to do before you do it. You have to look at the clues you have and figure it out, as opposed to a game that's constantly feeding you tutorial after tutorial on what you're supposed to do next. For instance, you have a vid phone where you call a lot of your contacts to get more clues or to advance the storyline. And while you can ask the Mark II what the vid phone number is, it doesn't just have a list where you pick and call it. You actually have to type in the number, so you actually have to remember it. In fact, I have a list of notes when I play this game, and I actually have a full page of my Snatcher notes, including phone numbers, or um, you actually talk to a witness, and this witness describes the face to you of the person that you're looking for, right? And you have to take this information to the computer so it can generate this sketch and find out who the person was based off the look. And you have to remember that or write it all down like I did. Speaking of the Mark II, since this is a Hideo Kojima game, and it's published by Konami, they have a lot of references to Metal Gear and other Konami franchises. Your Mark II, in fact, is actually named Metal Gear, and when Harry gives it to you in the beginning of the game, he even references that this game exists in the same timeline as he named it after the robot responsible for the nuclear catastrophe during the 20th century. Another huge Metal Gear reference is later in the game you go to a club that has a masquerade hour, and the name of the club itself is Outer Heaven. Once you go inside the club, you see the references to all the other Konami characters. So for instance, at one table you have Simon Belmont and Dracula sitting there. At another table you have Bill and Lance from Contra. You see Golmon up front, and you even see Sparkster from the Rocket Knight Adventure series. So in conclusion, I just want to say that it's a really great game with a really fun, very twisting story, and it really makes you think, and really one of the best detective games I've ever played since I really felt like I had to figure these things out on my own. And it's also really fun to watch Kojima kind of grow as a developer and a designer and watching him go from a simple game like Metal Gear, which had stealth elements, but really was an action game, seeing something like this, which is almost a graphic novel, really, and then going into and combining the two from really awesome games like uh, Zone of Enders and, of course, the Metal Gear Solid franchise. As always, thank you for watching, and if you like our videos, please subscribe. 
can also follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. And of course, check us out on brothersandsandy.com.